Welcome to Minecraft Bedrock Edition's Dungeons and Dragons. This is post commentary, if you can't tell. I am doing this because this uh, intro video, or the beginning one I thought was just going to be a tutorial, was a little bit more in depth than what I had anticipated, including with the story and just explaining Dungeons and Dragons, period. Now, the creator is Everbloom, as you can see, and there is some talking by the Dungeon Master here in just a second. So be sure to stick around so you can get a little bit of that story and my character class I decide to choose. Hey, glad you made it. I'm really happy that you're willing to give this game a shot. It's one of my favorite things to do with friends. Between the role playing, strategy, and just being goofy with each other, it's always a great time. D&D &D has something for every kind of player. Now, you said the other day that you wanted to just get kind of an intro experience before joining my regular campaign group. So I figured a more individual sort of experience would be a good way of showing you the ropes, give you an idea of what the experience can feel like. Just take a seat whenever you feel like getting started. I've got snacks that should last us until the end of the universe, so help yourself to those too. It's me again. Will you just sit in the damn seat? Like, just sit in the seat, bro. Stop looking at him. Sit in the seat. No, sit in the seat. I don't know why I did this, by the way. Like, why can't I just, just sit in the damn seat, dude? Sit in the seat! Sit in the seat! Good to go? Thank you. Okay, so first things first, let's choose your class. I've got the basics already written up for a few of them, so you only need to worry about picking one. Do you want to be a holy warrior with the ability to heal yourself and smite your foes with the power of your deity? Paladin might be the way to go. Oh! Or maybe a wizard, using your magic to blast bad guys sky-high with fireballs while deflecting incoming attacks? Hmm, but a rogue could be fun too. Hit and run tactics, poisoning your enemies and watching them succumb to the venom. So satisfying. But it's also lots of fun to just be a barbarian with a big axe. Barbarians can get so angry that they just kind of forget that they've been hit and keep hacking away. I've always had a hard time choosing when I'm a player, so take your time. I'm back. So this is the part where I chose my class. Now, since I'm playing by myself because I have no friends, hashtag lonely life, um, I'm just kind of surveying which one I wanted to try. And as you'll see here in just a few seconds, I actually end up choosing the Palatin because I think it's just a good character class. It's a little slow, but the healing powers should come in handy. I'm hoping anyways. Um, so that's what I went with. Um, as you'll see here in a second. And without further ado, back to the Dungeon Master. Okay, next let's allocate your stats. You want me to explain how stats and dice rolling work in this game? Stats determine what you're good at. Each stat has a use in combat, but they can also apply to role-playing situations and other things you do while adventuring in the world. Whenever you roll the 20-sided die, you'll add whichever stat applies to the roll. So, say you've got a plus three in wisdom and need to see if someone is telling the truth, you would roll the d20 and add three to whatever you rolled. That insight check would show how well you're able to read that person's intentions and emotions. Rolling high means you can understand them and see through any lies they might be telling. Rolling low means that you believe whatever they're saying. Within reason, of course. If you roll a 20 on that die, then you'll almost certainly succeed at whatever you're trying to do, or at least get useful info. Let's try an example. You are speaking to a tavern keeper, asking after some local bandits that you've been hired to hunt down. He talks easily enough, but he says that he has no information on these people or where to find them. Okay, you rolled a 10, so add three to that. With a 13, you notice him tense and almost physically withdraw when you ask him about the bandits, giving you the sense that he is hiding something and knows more about the situation than he's letting on. That's pretty much it. Rolling a 20 when you hit someone in a fight also counts as a critical hit and doubles how much damage you do to them. Rolling a 1 on that die, though, can be really bad news. Sometimes it just means failing whatever you're doing. Sometimes it means failing so spectacularly that you, I don't know, fall down a flight of stairs, out of a window, and into a pen of screaming goats. Okay, probably not that specifically, but you get the idea. You'll also see that your class already has stats that will best support their abilities. How you add your extra stat points is up to you. 
Do you want to make them better at what they already do, or do you want to balance them out a bit? You'll get more stat points to distribute as we play, so don't worry about this step too much. And here you will see where I put my points. I put three points in decks, and then the rest I kind of just even out the negatives. Since I'm new to Dungeons and Dragons, I wanted there to be not so many negatives. Boop. Perfect. Now, without further ado, back and to like it. That, you've made your first character. Congrats. Now, how about we dive right into things? Let me just set the scene for you. The continent of Faerun has seen hundreds of stories turn into legends. The Dawn Age, when dwarves overthrew the tyrannical giants and elves waged war against evil dragons, thereby carving out a place in the world for small folk. The tyranny of the Rose Dragon, when the Great Red Worm Yelvir Asalisar nearly raised Kalimshan and established her cruel empire. The time of troubles, when celestials and fiends alike were cast from their own realms, warring and laying waste to the mortal plane in their efforts to reclaim their divine positions. Yet each great story has great people steering the narrative. The Rose Dragon's empire only fell because Rathak al Kajan and his companions slew the evil beast. The times of troubles ended because those like the mage Midnight rose to the occasion, in their case taking the mantle of divinity from the slain celestial Mistra until she could be resurrected. Now we come to the precipice of another such event, a budding calamity that could warp reality as we know it. Though there is no prophesied chosen one, no foreseen savior, if you play your cards right, you might just be able to avert what is to come. Or perhaps your story will simply serve as a cautionary tale for those who survive. Despite this, it all starts with something as mundane as fetching groceries for your parents. So as we give a little bit more credit, where credit is due, for this fantastic add-on, and admittedly, there's a reason I left the beginning in, just quite a bit of little details and story, and you got to see my class. So hopefully, now I've got your taste buds a little wet, and now you're maybe a little bit hungry to see more of the story, as am I. Hopefully you are, like I am. And without further ado, there's a little bit more to this tale before we cut off and end it. We open on Nashkel, a village on the northern slopes of the Cloud Peaks. The late spring rains have abated making the trek across town to deliver a commission for your father at least a bit less muddy. As you make your way back along the main street, though, it is hard not to notice that your otherwise quiet home is riddled with strained, whispered conversations. And with that, that was the prologue. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.